people, we are back, Act 2, the podcast, episode 157, and we are back in the building. It's your boy, International Walt. It's your girl, Tash, the co-host with the mostest. And we back chilling with another episode of us. Uh, platforms you can catch us on is face, Facebook, act to the podcast.com, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube it, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcast it, Podcast Index, Podcast Addict, Pod Chaser, Player FM. You can also catch us on iHeartRadio. Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, you can find us. Ain't that some shit? Um, let's get right to it. How you feel? Um, I'm good. Life's great. Ooh, <laughs> no. Ooh, we're gonna have to blank that one out. We're gonna have to blank that one out. Damn. Hey, talk your shit, man. Talk your shit. See. We got an editing room, so I ain't tripping. You know what I mean? Unlike she would be if I said some shit like that. She'd be bugging the fuck out. But we got an editing room. We can put a nice look over that. And we did. <laughs> <laughs> but um, life is good, you know. I um, <laughs> think I would shake you up a little bit with Ooh, that. Ooh, damn. I'm like, cold what nigga walk now. <laughs> um... Uh, life is good. I am she shook truly herself blessed. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I am truly blessed. Um, I'm feeling good mentally. I'm a ten. You mm. know, I um, I'm a ten because you know I don't want I don't have anything to complain about. I'm I'm blessed. My husband's blessed. My family's blessed. And I, you know, this we talk about money, our finance finances as well. But I ain't even talking about money, like blessings in the sense that we're here, we're breathing, we're we have mobility of our limbs. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just extremely grateful for that. Um, and I, I feel good, like I'm proud of myself. I've been doing the things that I said I was going to do, holding myself accountable, working out. Even you know, I couldn't make it to the gym the last couple of days, but I still wanted to make sure that I did something. And um, yeah, you so followed up on it. Yeah, uh, and I'm proud of myself. Showed up for yourself. Absolutely, Go and um, yeah, so mentally, and it helps your mental. Mm -hmm. I am not a person that feels like, and I'm trying to get there today. I was determined to make sure that I worked out because I had a meeting this morning. My, my morning started off kind of early, where I had meetings starting at nine o'clock. In my head, I told myself I'm gonna get up at seven thirty. I'm gonna work out from like. 8 to 8.45. But I lied to myself. But I knew I'm going to work out today. All right. I lied to myself about that. It did, that didn't happen. But I'm going to work out today. And I made it happen. So I'm proud of myself. And I got a good workout in. Yesterday, too. Yesterday, I took it a little slow. I did yoga, but it still was good. Um, but, yeah. So I'm proud of myself. Um, finan finances, a 10. We're blessed. Um, you know, we didn't get a chance to like kind of get to we we but we had discussed it amongst us about inflation and just like we're living in times where things are really we're seeing Fucking the effects of prices and just life being jacked up and some of this shit is price gouging too. I'm gonna just put that out there. Some yeah. stuff is inflation, but because of inflation, people are fucking price gouging shit. Yeah, and and you know, we are blessed to have careers where we are paid well. Um, however, you know, the, the cost of living is doing this and your salary is doing this. Like they ain't keeping up in step, mm -hmm. but I ain't complaining. Um, and I'm grateful that I have a partner that, you know, we can work together. We can support one another and we hold each other down. And I'm always hold you down. I'm always going to hold you down. Um, uh, work is a 10, start right the here. year off. Um, you know, had some, I, I, I was kind of slow the end of the year been picking up this week you know had some meetings able to like really step in and do my thing and it's all been you know proven good i had a team meeting with my team today and it was just good listening to them i realized i, I can feel the shift of dynamics where like they are trusting in me because they've been in the in their positions longer than i've been in this department and i could see now their trust in me and and um I don't want to say listening to me like they're children, but knowing that what I say I'm going to do or the information that I provide or the feedback that I give, like I stand on it. And, um, you know, it just it feels good to be a leader that someone looks at um, as a leader. Because, you know, some people be looking like, man, I don't care what this chick say, you know, or I ain't listening, I ain't paying attention, or she don't know what she's talking about. 
And coming into this role, I didn't, but I knew how to be a leader. I may not have known the job, but I knew how to be a leader. So it's good to see all of the dots connecting. And I can just feel their shift in energy. I think before they was kind of like side-eyeing me like, Mm -hmm. "Mm, like, we'll see. And so I can feel that shift in energy. So that's all good. Um, And then physically, can't lie here. I feel, I would like to say that I'm a 10, but it's always something. I'm almost 43 and there's always something. Is my hips is driving me crazy. And it's it's like when I'm moving and working out, it feels good. If I'm sitting still for a minute. And then get up like my heel. It's like, come mm-hmm. on, what is happening? Working out, my hip didn't hurt at all. And I was moving. But let me sit down for a couple seconds and then go to get up. It's going to be like, ah, like what the heck? It's so, sensitive like that. Like yeah. you, ah, ah. De- depending on the direction that I so go. So it's like a sharp pain, not a dull pain. No, it's a sharp pain. Like, it's a sharp pain. I could not, and this ain't no because I'm, you know, thick, because I could do my, it's my right hip. I could put my, you know, you go to put your sock on, you pull your, your foot up on your lap. Couldn't do that with this. It's, I can't move my hip in this direction. This direction is fine, but it can't go like this. Mm. Yes, weird, weird. But so I'm a nine for that. So I would love to be tens across the board, but I I ain't gonna fake it. So I'm a ten, 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 nine. Mm-mm-mm. How are you? I am good mentally. I feel like I'm a ten. Um, I feel very sharp. Um, that don't mean I'm gonna feel like that tomorrow. <laughs> but right now, this second, I feel like a ten. Um, finances is a nine. Um, again, like she said, to piggyback on her, it's good to have a partner in your corner that you can uh you know walk through life with and partner with through um financial stuff through all kinds of shit so um yeah i'm I'm thankful for that uh work is a nine it's real boring right now mm-hmm. people can't decide shit can't move i'm kind of at a standstill but i gotta be there um don't you wish of, you could be like call me when y'all figure yeah, it out I do, I do. like i'm on the clock and i'm waiting i really do i really yeah. do but it's like it's a blessing to be somewhere being paid for somebody you know just to be somewhere yeah not actually like working um mentally you know hit emails and phone calls and shit like that but work wise like that's um, when i document this job y'all will see but i hope it ain't too long in between videos because yeah. ain't nothing changed <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know since it laughing it again um, but I loved your video. <laughs> just see, like I've known what you do the last twenty three years, but I've never seen it from that stage. If y'all haven't seen it, check out at two underscore the podcast on Instagram, where he is showing the makings of a new restaurant that he's on. My baby got a day job that he is amazing <laughs> at, and um, yeah, he's showing the makings of a restaurant. I'm excited, like. Again, I've I've seen his work throughout the last twenty plus years, and it's usually more the finishing the finishings. Like I've seen him do amazing um, ceiling structures, soffits is what they're called. Um, so I've seen him do a lot of work, but I've never seen it from the ground up. So I'm really excited to see the progress. Y'all I'm excited check it to out. show everybody, but it's like subscribe to the YouTube on. channel so you can see more. Like anybody out the there in construction or in. Um, the business of construction it's like these people can have a hundred meetings before i'm called to the the, to to have a task to do and you would think in a hundred meetings decisions would be made when they call me i'm tasked to do the job i do the job no it's not that way they can have a hundred meetings they got to have a hundred more money's being spent people are counting stuff down to the dime it's it's just a, a, a huge process do you think it's that same <coughs> you do commercial construction I, I I would think when you talk about residential, it's, it's a little tighter. bit more detail. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit more uh, of a tight ship or lack of people want their term. houses because it's a home. Yeah, yeah, it's a home. You can't fuck around there. Um, with commercial, you got a little bit more um, flexibility. But when you get into like big shit, you got to call in other people like EPA and health departments and PennDOT, and it's a whole process. Where a job before this, I didn't have to deal with PennDOT and EPA and health officials and shit like that. And let me tell you, inspectors, construction inspectors, s- some of them are hard and, and and some are easy. There's no health inspector that's easy. Like mm. they are, and it's crazy but how it you go. Be. You No, it's crazy how you go in shit establishments and, and places where you mm. might see mice and shit running around. But I haven't met a health inspector that is 
lenient at all. Like, at all. That's good yeah, to hear at all. that they don't, like, cut corners because you're talking about people. I mean, you would, you even in construction inspections, you would not really want people to be lenient because we want to make sure this building ain't going to fall. When but I when say talk- lenient, though, I mean, like, you build a rapport with an inspector and he kind of knows your work. So mm-hmm. he might not be as hard on you the ninth time as he was the first. Yeah. That's all I'm Or he saying. might, if something needs to be corrected, he may, like, put yeah. a bug in your ear without failing you. On the first time, I would fail. On the ninth time, yo, t- make sure you take care of that. Okay. That, that type of thing. But a health inspector. Nah, it's yeah. a fail. That's, <laughs> I mean, it's good to hear that. It's good to hear yeah. that. So, um, work, what did I say work was? Um, I think a you nine. said it was an, a nine. Okay. And physically, I feel like I'm a 10. Um, I'm hurting in some places, but I'm working out every day and I love it. And, uh, I don't, I don't necessarily want to when I'm driving home, but you know, by the time I get here, I'm, I'm game. Like, let's, let's go, let's go do it. Do you have a workout alter ego? I do. What's his name? I don't have a name for him, but I do. I was thinking to myself, I'm going to create an alter ego so I can like. That's turn what I'll be to trying her. to tell you. That like, I'm you trying be, to you do go that. Into, into Tasha and you be, oh, oh, this hurts, this hurts. Like go into that motherfucker and be like, oh, I know this shit hurts. Like, oh, fuck it. I gotta fuck fill it. out like my bad bitch persona and be nah, like, you gotta come on some like. Not no diva shit. No, I mean, like, get this body right, bad bitch. Like, I, you know, I ain't on no diva. Like, I go in there looking like I'm Big Daddy on the yard. No, like, but you gotta look like you, like, you, 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 you wanna be like a muscle woman, but you don't. No, I don't wanna be a I muscle woman. I just said that. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm agreeing. <laughs> like, yeah, train, I don't. Yeah, you wanna have that, mm, like, you just took a whiff of pneumonia or a, a steroid cycle. <laughs> I don't even know Are what that means. Like Roy rage or something. I, yeah, I just I gotta I gotta get I, I want to develop an alter ego so that when I get in there, it's like I'm I'm hyped. I I love the burn. I love the sweat. I love the challenge. It's just you know getting there. But you know what it is Mondays. They say never miss a Monday because that's where the, you, if you take off on the weekend, that's where it's like, okay, getting back on the the treadmill, getting back on the hamster and wheel. I, and and I then by the two, stretching sticks today. The stretching sticks? Oh. The by Tuesday, sticks. you feel a little bit better. Wednesday, you in the groove. Thursday, then Friday, you kind of want to be like, I'm taking a little easy. I've been killing it this week. And then Saturday, Sunday, you chill. And then Monday, it's like, oh, here we go again. Here mm-hmm. we go again. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> and I DMX. <laughs> um, that was a, uh, that's your best DMX? Yeah. Here we go. What do you, what do, you do, my nigga? <laughs> <laughs> Clip that. Clip that. I wish I had the time around you to know exactly what that said. Um, Wows and woes. Um, <coughs> my wow. I, I'm a, I'm just gonna get myself props. Like I'm really proud of myself. Um, you be. I made a promises to myself, and this ain't like no resolution thing because y'all know we've been working out before the new year. But shout out to the people who did just start in the new year. No, fuck that shit. Y'all crowding the gym. No, the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, shout out to them nah, too. But for me, I'm gonna hear that shit. But it's never too late, y'all. <laughs> but for me, I'm just I'm proud of myself. I've been now. Don't I've been down this road before. So, it ain't like, you know, it is what it is. I've been on this road before. Things happen, but I'm not going to let that stop me. I know what I know. Things that I don't know, I'm going to learn. And, you know, it's weird because you think in no way, shape, or form was what happened to you a good thing with your health emergency last year. When you think about where we are now as a result of that. My Bible lesson the other day says, God teaches us through adversity. Who knows if we would be here? Who knows if, you know, we would have jumped back or I would have... be 20 more pounds. Yeah, if I would have jumped back or if you would have started at all. And it's like, you think you want to say like, God, you couldn't have like got me here a different way. Yeah. But it had to happen that way. And that that literally God, it, that was the Bible. I forget the actual scripture, but the lesson was 
God teaches us through adversity. Um, so I'm not grateful. I'm just grateful for where we are. Mm -hmm. So my wow is just myself. I'm really proud of myself for just. I'm proud of you. For, too. You know, and 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 guess I've what? seen you break promises to yourself. I've seen you talk shit. I've seen you say you're gonna do something and not do it. I've seen you say yeah. you're gonna follow up and not do it. So and I'm I, proud to see you. I think for myself too, my mentality is different. And I'm not doing this like, oh, I gotta lose this many pounds by my birthday, or I want to lose this many pounds a month, or before I used to like count the weeks, like, oh, we go on vacation this many weeks so i got 12 weeks oh and then if i then i don't do nothing the first two weeks i'll be like oh i still got 10 weeks you know then you get down it's like damn i got four weeks but but i'm not doing that to myself i'm going at my pace and consistency is it is my mindset i just want to be consistent yeah. and i'm just proud of myself the reason for doing why you that. should do it is because you said so that's mm. what i learned that's why you should do it. Not because of weight, not because of looks, not because of vanity and no sense. The reason why you should do it is because you told yourself you was. Mm. And that's just it. And if you lie to yourself, how can you expect anybody else to tell you the truth? Well, you got to live with it. You know yeah. you lied to yourself. You know you, you could have been working out and you just sitting the fuck down now. Yeah. Like, you ain't really doing nothing. You ain't went nowhere. You could have been working out. Yeah. Um. My woe, I, you know what? I, I don't even want to make nothing up. I, I mean things are going on in the world um but i'm just grateful for you know our life and where we are my, our immediate circle um even our extended circle you know uh no you know what i'm sorry let me let me change that and this i know will tie into like something i think we probably want to talk about my woe is um you know I, I i love my friends you know the circle of friends that i have and it makes me sad when i know that people are going through things one of the things that I've learned, another lesson from God, is that some of the things we go through is to help others. Um, and I think I probably mentioned this before. You know, one of the hardest things in life is grieving a person that is still alive, especially if it's your parents, right? Like life just isn't supposed to happen that way. So I'm not, a, well, we'll never put anybody's business out there. But just knowing that, you know, I have people that are close to me that are dealing with some of the things that, you know, I've had to deal with. It, it breaks my heart, but I'm happy that I have the experience to be able to love on them and support them. So just this is a new year. I know some and you know what? Sometimes it's the hope in us that will break our hearts even more because you hope things will be different. You hope people will change. And that hope like you, you, like you said it was the hardest thing to do. That's a one of. Oh, OK. It ain't the hardest. And it's for each individual. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, I'm, I'm not saying, I, you know, let's just not say one of the hardest things. It's a hard thing, right. you, know, <laughs> you know, for some people. For the listeners, for everybody, I mean, it's, 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 it's caveats on that. I just wanted to be clear on that. Yeah, but, I'm not saying the hardest at right. all because I don't want to compare that to actually losing exactly. a parent it's, or losing a child. With. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying with. that. It's just a hard thing to gr grieve someone. And I'm, I'm saying a parent because that's been my experience. But it could be a friend. You mm -hmm. could you could have lost a truly great friend that is still alive and you may have access to their life or not and you know but you you know um grieving that relationship grieving the loss of a marriage like so grieving someone who is still alive it's still a loss and that hurts and it, and you know when it's a parent it's a different dynamic so that's just my well just knowing that you know you know i got friends out here who are hurting in that way but i love you boo and i'm here to support you in any way my wows and woes is um just just blessed the uh just just making it another week. I got an uh, anniversary that's coming up and it's it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. This just happens to be an up day and I'm trying for it to be an up week. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy that it's, you know, the middle of the week and it's still up. So I'm grateful for that. Um mm -hmm. my woe is just that um, you know, life. You just deal with stuff and nothing in particular but just life. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, everybody dealing with something, about to deal with something, or just coming out of dealing with something. Mm. So um, that's just what it is. Keep the world moving. Yeah, just just deal with it the best you can. If you can't, find somebody you can talk to, get some tools, and um, and move on. Yeah. I want to say shouts out to my she mom, too, because uh, she don't feel too well. So shouts out to you. I love you. Um, I hope you feel better. Uh, what are we talking about? Um, so... I saw a clip of somebody, and I don't even, Jesus Christ, I hate to say his name, um, NBA young boy, and he was asked about being a father, mm -hmm. and his response to that was 
something I have to respect because it was honest. And he was like, he's not really into it. You know, I'm only around my kids because you're here, the interviewer. And, you know, to be honest with you, like, I'm not that that great at it. Mm. And he has 11 kids. And how and old is he? I don't know his age. I'm okay. sure he's mid-20s or something like that. But what's, what do you say for a parent who has parented and realizes or thinks that they've done a bad job or the, the standard and and what constitutes a bad parent? You know, like some might think um, neglect of the kids. Some might think it's financial if you wasn't there financially for the kids. Some might think if you just wasn't there with your time, like just giving love and things like that and being there at all the dates that you're supposed to be at. So what do you say for a person who, or mom or dad who might think like, I, I'm, my kid is 20 something years old and you know, I don't think I was the best parent. Like, I don't think I was, I was good at it. I, and then there's parents out there who might get a second chance because you have a second or third or fourth kid. But even if you have three or four kids, you just, once you in it, you just kind of feel like, you know, this ain't one of my best things that I do well. Is, is parent. I have these kids. I have to take care of them. I love them. But, you know, if I'm being honest with myself, I'm not the greatest at this. And everybody always say it ain't a playbook for parenting, but there is a standard for it, I think. And there is a, a point where people, you know, not that it's right, but you're judged like yeah. you're good, good or bad. But what do you say to that? Well, I mean, so what I have to say, like, that's some honesty for your behind for right. him to say that. And and it goes to show, I think, it, this is a different conversation, but I'll get back to your question. As women, we have to be more um, aware and conscious in the decisions that we're making and having babies with people. Because this man, I mean, I'm sure he didn't just realize this at the 11th child. Right. But yet women, I don't know how many baby moms he had, but I'm sure there's multiple. I don't know if it's 11 or it's four or whatever. But women, you know, he, I'm sure he didn't want to be a dad prior to number 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. He might have realized this at number three. And women, we just have to be more conscious in paying attention. Like, you know, you meet a man and you kind of observe you know, how is he with his children? And then you think to yourself, damn, I want to make sure I don't get pregnant by him. I mean, for some women... It's a hard the, thing to do. For Well, for some women, it's, it's, it's a standard because you think to yourself, even if you don't want to get pregnant, if you, you got to think, do you even want him as a mate? If you know he's a deadbeat or he's he, he doesn't really want to be a dad. I wouldn't want to be with that person knowing like you got kids and you ain't really into it. That says something about your character. Not... Not good, bad, or indifferent. It just says something that I but, wouldn't want to deal with. But see, that's the with. thing. You just said deadbeat. And I want to get to the question you're talking about. Right. The, you know, who you being pregnant by. I, 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 I get that. I received that. But when when you... What, what did you just... Yo, you said deadbeat and all that kind of stuff. You put a negative connotation around somebody just being honest. Now, all his kids can be taken care of on a, on a financial side. They could not want for anything. But... I don't really like watching babies or, you know, like I don't, I'm just not good with them probably because I don't try enough. Whatever the reason is, you just don't do it well. And you honest with that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you just said you're here. Well, when I say so why is it a, Debbie only uh, associated with finance? Well, I just mean Debbie, meaning you're not. You're not a good parent. I, I'm, I don't know what it's associated with. I'm just saying you put a negative connotation around it. And it's just like, I'm just being honest. So what, why if I'm I'm not as good of a dad or not as good of a mom and I'm being honest about it, why am I deadbeat? To say you're not good I'm, at it is one thing. To say I'm not really into it and I don't really want to do it. I'm just, I just got these kids here because you... Well, hit, even that, that's let's take it to different. the extreme. I don't really want to do it or I'm so not into it. So that's what makes you a deadbeat. Like, the kids are here. At that point, there should... I mean, there is a choice. If you make the choice not to do it, that's what makes you a deadbeat to me. Because once the... Now, to say, I, I don't really know how to do it, I ain't that great at it, but you're still trying, then that's different. You know, because at least at least you want to try. So, back to your question. So, he, he didn't say he wasn't trying. I'm just... It, it just was, a, a, you know, I, I don't... I'm not into this. I don't do this well. 
like that's that's kind of what the sentiment was like i i just i'm not into the, like you know how some people are on the extreme of oh my god i'm a dad and this is great it's the best fucking thing that's ever happened to me and oh my god what was i missing so if you got people on the spectrum of that then there has to be the opposite end where it's like well, i think the opposite is absent parents but it sounds right, like he's not absent but it's just like Fine, I'll watch him if you want me to, and but I don't know. Maybe really it's after having 11 kids, but I'm just saying, Tired. would this, the sentiment be the same if it was one? But just more around the honesty of, I don't do this well. Yeah, so I Whether think, you're a mom or a dad. So I, I think that's, the, now, I think and, as a parent. Not to cut you off, but you have a ton of friends and like friends with kids. Have they ever confided in you to say something even close to that? Like. Yo, this momhood shit. Like, I love my babies, but God damn. Hell yeah, they said, they <laughs> said that it's hard. And they, you know, hell Well, yeah. a little bit more than hard. Well, like, and see, that's the I thing. don't like it. <laughs> I, like, I, I love these kids. I love them to death, and I'll die for them right now. But I don't like it. And maybe not in those exact words, but yes. But, but it's also more so of the, like, I've had friends express, like, I love my kids. I love my babies. If I had to do it all again, I wouldn't. I wouldn't, or maybe I wouldn't do it in the same way that I did. Like, not that I don't want any of them not to be here, or if they have they one, not that I don't want. Different. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, and they, you know, the, I I have had conversations where people have been very honest. Like, this ain't no joke. I love my kids, like you said. I would do anything in the world for them. Or I love my child. I would do anything in the world for them. But. I wish the situation or the dynamics were were different. Now, I think as a parent, <coughs> if you if you have adult children who you're not really required to parent anymore because now, you know, they're adults, they're kind of leading their life, maybe you're just there as a support person and you can admit that you weren't the best parent. I think as the parent, if you know you tried or you gave whatever you had. I think at some point you got to give yourself some grace. Because it's a difference in not being a good parent because you di just didn't want to. Or you were mean or you were abusive. But if it was like, you know what, when I look back at it, I just wasn't that good at it. You got to give yourself some grace in thinking maybe you weren't taught to be. Maybe you didn't have a good parent or an example of a good parent. Or maybe it was a situation where you felt like... You know what? I got pregnant and I had this kid. I didn't really want to be a mom or I didn't really want to be a dad. So maybe I didn't put my all into it. Once the child is grown, though, I think it's futile to beat yourself up about it. Now, now have you 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 have, have you recently like, well, beside from work, you recently had like older friends that have, have probably been done with parenting. Have they ever expressed like I didn't do that well with that one or? You know, you can tell by just that relationship that they have, like it, like that. No, I haven't really. No, I think because you know what I think in some cases, people may be um, their idea. I don't know. I think they may be they may misperceive whether or not they've done a good job or not. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, I think maybe it's the child's place to say whether, you did a good job right. or not. It's like it's like you cooking some food and somebody eating it and you said, my food is delicious. And, and it's like, not. well, I got to eat it. I'll tell you whether or not I think it's delicious. Now, it's subjective because what one child might feel, and I've read this before, like, every, like you every can have a house, has a different, different experience. experience. Yeah. So one child might think like, nah, like mom and, mom and or dad, like. They were good. They, you know, every and, child's and, experience is different and, and every child with the parent's experience is different. Yeah, so so I think it's subjective, but for the parent to say, I was a great parent to you, says who? Says you. Maybe you thought you were, but maybe you weren't the parent that I needed you to be. Maybe you thought you were the a great parent because that was the only parent you knew how to be. But maybe I needed you to be something else. Did you ever ask me? Did you ever think about... Or especially like parents that have multiple children who parent them all the same way. Mm -hmm. That could be a detriment in of itself because right. every child has different needs. So, you just, yeah, she, just just speaking on that, if you have uh, three kids, like your oldest child don't know what it's like to be the middle child. Your right. middle child don't know what it's like to be the oldest and neither one of them know what it's like to be the baby. 
Right. So they have different experiences like that. They like that child grew up being the baby. You may have grew up being the oldest, and it's like y'all experiences are are different. And you're a different. Like I think about my situation. My mom had my mom and dad had three daughters. My mom had me when she was twenty. She had my next sister when she was twenty five. She had my next sister when she was thirty three. I know just from myself. I'm not. I wasn't who I was at twenty five. I wasn't the same person at 25 that I was at 20. So I had a different mother than my sister who was born when she was 25. Now, now she's getting a mother that has one child that has, you know, lived four and a half years of being a parent in this, you know, tumultuous relationship, whatever that is. So now at 20, you know, fresh out of high school, being a parent versus 25. Okay, it's different. Now you in your 30s, life has really liked you in some ways. And so now you're you're a third it's person. A totally different yeah, experience. I, me at twenty and thirty three was like, "Hi, I'm Natasha. Nice to meet you." Completely different. Mm -hmm. So again, it's it's subjective for somebody to say they were or were not. I think that. In but if some, you sit with yourself and you're being honest with yourself, you can whether you voice it to the world or not. I can understand the embarrassment or the shame that that may come with it, the stigma. But if you just being honest with yourself and be like, "I'm just." I see other people parent and I, I see it in real life. I see it on TV and I'm not that. Yeah. And, and I think too, it, it comes with some honesty, but it also has to come with, um, it has to be genuine and okay, what's next? So as a parent, if you say, you know, I'm sorry that I wasn't the best mom or I'm sorry that I wasn't the best dad. Okay. If we're both still alive, do we just leave? like, okay, you weren't, Let's say I'm 30 years old. So maybe you uh, you weren't up until the time I was 30. Or maybe you're apologizing for not being the best parent when I was a teenager. So now from 30 on, what's the next step? Are you, are, are you trying to make any changes? Because now I don't need you to parent me in the same way you did, you know, at 10, 12, 15, 18. But now as a 30-year-old, are you trying to change anything about yourself? So I think that's where it comes into play, where sometimes parents, while I do think they should be given grace, sometimes it's like they want to be given, um, like, I can't think of the word, like, they just want to be excused for their for their bad behavior, I guess is the word. I ignorance can't... for not knowing. And it's like, uh, you, you're, you're not excused for ignorance. Right. Like you, it's up to you to find out. It was up to you to figure it out. And, and maybe you, know you couldn't, saying? but now, okay, how can we better this situation? Because you could, you could maybe have a change of, of who you are, a change of mindset, a change of character, a change of behaviors that now a 30 year old relationship with their mother may appreciate. So it, it, maybe there can be some forgiveness if that's needed. But I think with parents, it's one of those things where they kind of, um, and I, I'm saying this as a, as a daughter, like they hang their hats on the things that they're supposed to do. I fed you, I clothed you, I housed you. Well, you would have went to jail if you didn't. Or like, right. I would have been taken away if you didn't. It's like a man saying, you know, I don't cheat, I don't beat you. I, I'm, like I can't give brownie points be. for that. Right. Like, you you know, that that's the bare minimum. <laughs> so I can't give you brownie points for doing those things. Um, but So as a parent, How like, attentive were you? How much were you there? Did, were you at How loving were you? Games? How supportive yeah. were you? Did you talk to me? What discipline did you instill in mm -hmm. me? What values and, you know, what, what character did, did you, you teach help me build anything? in me? Yeah. What, uh, what loving memories do we have together? And again, what memories do we have where you, where there, it may not be, have been so loving, but like you said, there was a lesson there. So maybe I had to get a spanking. Maybe, you know, I had to get cursed out. Maybe I had to get knocked upside my head, but it was for my good. Like, were there, so again, I think it's one of those things where there can be some honesty in admitting that, but then what, what's next? What's next? You telling me that you were a bad parent, like what's next? But again, back to him making that statement, I think it's a difference in saying I'm not good at this than, you know, I, but, I'm just not into this. But that, that. And that in conclusion would come from not being good at it. What, say that the, the in conclusion and feeling like I'm not into it could come from not being good at it. Frustration. 
Like I'm tried, I tried, I got 11. I tried, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm frustrated that I'm not getting getting better at it. So, so that so kind of takes me out of it because I'm spinning the wheels here. As an adult, then I think it's your responsibility because the kids are here. They didn't right. ask to be here. So it's your responsibility to seek guidance. Look at Nick Cannon. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he stretched for time. He ain't stretched for but a dollar ha, at ha, all. He has said um, uh, He has said also to throughout the holidays, he was upset with himself because, he, like you said, I, it's just not enough for me to go around. But the, but again, he was upset with himself because he has the desire to to be. He has the desire. I'm sure he don't get it right all the time. I'm but sure he might miss a game or something. What if his something? desire over the years starts to wear on him where he becomes frustrated with that, you know, like always wanting to and missing and always wanting and missing and can't, uh, you know, can't be here, can't be there. And not saying that it's right, but it kind of dulls it, your enthusiasm about it. Well, that's your fault because you kept coming in all of these women. <laughs> I mean, that's you your make fault. it sound so simple, and it's like I'm talking about a real thing. Like no, I thought I, it was sh like not that it's a good thing at all, and I don't condone it. I just never heard nobody of his age say something like that. So honest, it makes me think these kids today are so different from us, so different from us. But for somebody in their mid twenties with eleven kids to be like, you know, yeah, my kids are all taken care of because I'm rich, but. I'm not like really into it. I'm not saying like I, I don't I don't do it because I don't want to. It's just something that I'm not great at, and I'm and and I'm not into it like that. And Where I, some people love motherhood, some people love fatherhood. And it's sad though because again, you got eleven lives that you know, and you're just like, yeah, I I really ain't into it. And hopefully, he has some people in his corner, or some people will reach out to him. In a true, He's genuine to way, Antonio Cromartie. and and want to support him because I'm sure I'm sure it's hard with one child. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's hard with two children. My 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 sister Toya has four. My sister Erica has five. So I know it's hard with multiple. I cannot imagine how hard it is with eleven. And again, the dynamics being different because they're not all under one roof, and I don't know like their geographical. Um, situation, they may not live all in the same state, so right. I'm, I'm sure it's <laughs> difficult. But you, this is something you did. It didn't. It wasn't like um, immaculate conception, and you like God. Why you send eleven at one time? You did this. Yeah. So so, and again, I'm sure it didn't get hard over. at eleven. I'm sure at three, you probably four, three you probably four, felt like, like yeah, this and this, and, I ain't and to into say this. like I'm I'm only in here with the kids because you're here. Like otherwise, I would be out on the road doing what I'm doing. Like I'm sticking and moving, and you know I'm sending tens of thousands, of hundreds of thousands of dollars back to them. But I'm only here sitting on the couch with my son on my lap because you interviewing me. Yeah, like that's. I mean, hopefully other young men and women will hear that and think to themselves, like, let me be careful about who I procreate with. Mm -hmm. Or men, let me take precautions not to create a life because, you know, after the baby shower and y'all wear the Burberry shirt, it's a real life that needs to be taken care of now. And, and. Women can women go through that postpartum depression. I don't know if there's a thing with men that's similar, but women can feel like I ain't really into it. But guess what? At that point, women don't have a choice. Right. They got to step up. They got to get into it. They and, and hopefully, you know, they get the help that they need so that they can not just physically be there, but mentally and emotionally be there. But I know postpartum is a real thing. I've heard from people. It is... It is real. It so is a real men, thing. Look up Andrea Yates. Men can feel that way. I'm not giving her no pass on that, though. But men can feel that way, too. But they can decide to step off. Like, I ain't really into it. Like, it, it, eh, it, you know, I, and I ain't available to watch the kids or I'm on the road or whatever the situation is. But women, like, you, you got to step up. So hopefully him saying that, especially, like you said, for that generation, that, like, lets dudes know, like, let me chill because you just spoke on postpartum depression and I, I'm just saying this this is a fact this is enough for debate before Andrea Yates there was not a single talk about postpartum depression she was the first person that made America say what happened why did she do that and it's because of this 
And that's what started the awareness of postpartum depression. So for you to say not give her a pass, it's like the the foul thing that she did by, by, by drowning all of her kids. But it's like that's what brought the awareness to postpartum depression. Yeah, I, I, because I, before that, nobody ever even heard of it. I, I, well, I think they did, but it wasn't spoke. It was kind and of one of those. On, we got to get on. Yeah, the, it was kind of one of those things that was taboo because as a woman, I never who, even heard the term before. Yeah, and, it, I have, and everybody was like, "Why did this lady? Do, it, why did she do this?" And it was like she had two years of postpartum depression. Oh my God, what the hell is that? And it was like, okay, it's this cycle that where women can have children and the hormones ain't working and they cannot feel connected with their kids and shit happens to their mind. So it's like, damn, that can really happen. And that's when it started. Okay, times after that, when some sh bad shit happened, it was like, okay, that's what it is. I had heard of it, but I think what it was is it was taboo because for a woman who wants to admit, like, I ain't really into my kids like that. Or I ain't really liking we did, them we like that. We're sitting here talking that's about what that. That's what I'm saying. We're sitting here talking that, that's about That's why that. I said I don't know if that term it, it applies to men. But I know men, if women can feel like that, I'm sure men can feel like that too. But women got to step up. Unfortunately, they do horrific things like Andrea Yates. But women have to step up to, to be there for the kid because the man can just step off. Um, moving on, talk about watching who you procreate with and having kids with and all that kind of stuff. And we see all types of stories in the news and T Tiana Taylor and, um, Iman, Sh Iman Shumpert got divorced and they seem like such a great couple the whole time that they was married. And why do you, why does it seem like not even, I don't even want to talk about them, but just in general, like the Gary Owens of the world, the Tiana's, it seems like when divorce happens, the, the 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 people who you think are the nicest turn to the meanest and like now he don't you know he ain't the kids ain't safe with him because he high all the time and the shit with gary owens and his wife and it just seems like the meanest shit comes out um in divorce like well because i think that's when again we're looking at these people and we're judging them based off of pictures and videos that they post on social media, which is a snapshot of a moment of their day. We don't know what goes on behind closed doors. So I think that's why it, it comes across to people. Like her family may not be surprised by any of this conversation at all, like her family and close friends. But I think because we only see the good things like she like you know maybe if they're having arguments or you know whatever's going on that's not being posted which it doesn't have to be we're only seeing the good stuff we're only seeing how gorgeous they are we're only right. seeing the amazing family photo shoots but when things go left and now and the crazy part is it's not even that it like they are in a position where like the cardi b situation getting on live and talking about it it's being found in court documents, which is so But hold up, babe. aside from all the celebrities, I don't even want to talk about them. I'm t my, my question was, um, it, shit. You said, why does the nicest people seem to be the meanest? Well, no, I was, you made me lose my train of thought. Um, you went on for a little bit there. Um, it's, if, do, do we say the, like, just say the right things just to say it? Like, do you think, in the midst of a divorce, you would be mean to me. I would be mean to you. Or do we just sit here and say things like, no, nah, that's, that's my baby. I love him. Like, I love her. Like, I wouldn't do that. It would be amicable. But then when the shit really hits the fan, it's like you do something that or, you know, you say something that I really don't. It rubbed me the wrong way. Now I do something. Now we add each. Now we really being mean to each other. Like, do we just say this shit because we mean it or, or we do we say it just to be saying it? No, I think so. The thing is this though: if you're in a good space, you're in a good space. If if that space starts to deteriorate and it comes towards divorce, then it's probably because m bad stuff has happened. So it's not like you're just digging up mean stuff. She may just be telling the truth, or people in divorce, the truth ends up coming out, and it may seem like it's mean. But I'm sure it's not a surprise. This is probably a conversation that they've had before. She probably said, you always high. You supposed to be watching the girls. You know I got to do such and such and such. And you always in here high. You ain't even watching them. 
it may come across as mean because we've never seen that. But I don't think like it's a situation where she's just digging up dirt. It could again, it's just new to us, or it seems like, oh my God, this is so mean. But behind closed doors, this may have been something that has been going on for a while, or like I gotta take the kids with me everywhere I go. Okay, I can't but that's even just, leave them. But it them. seems like it happens a lot, like when people they separate or because divorce. you gotta think at the but time even of divorce. Nothing, even if nothing, if it's no infidelity, it's no DV. It's just we outgrown each other, and and maybe you don't like that. I don't want to give you the house, or maybe you don't like that. I'm taking the cars. Like, maybe it's something like that. It's not necessarily something bad that happened up to the divorce. Just we outgrown each other. We have a divorce. Maybe you don't really want to, but I do. And I'm forcing it. Like, that kind of shit. It's like, that causes you to be, to act like this person. You never loved them. Like, you being mean as shit to them for just because you in your bag and you in your feelings. But all that shit you said... You know, in a relationship, like, I would never do that. It would, you know. I think when pe hurt people hurt people. So if you're, if, if you want a divorce and I don't, then it may be a situation where, like, I'm mad, my feelings hurt. So I may say or do some things to hurt you because my feelings are hurt. But, in the, but if you really go back and think to yourself, like, damn, I really love this person. You know what? If, if. If it's an amicable divorce, then it seems you probably like people won't forget who they who that person was. Like they forget that they loved that person at one time. That's what it seems like. It, but and, again, again, we only if, know if these circumstances are bad shit leading up to it. Then okay, I agree. Exactly. But if it's not, and it's just okay, we ain't had sex in a year, and we need to have a divorce. Like okay, you see the writing on the wall. Why are you fighting this? And now you being mean. Now I'm being. But you saying like, being what mean? The fuck? The, maybe the truth is just that ugly or it's just bad maybe it, you know like in a situation i guess being mean i'm saying it, it can't be amicable it's like no okay the house is mine well you know i want the house it's like well it's mine like you why you know you shouldn't even be fighting that but you being mean just to be mean because you upset and, and again you acting like you mean, acting I... like you never loved me or i'm acting like i never loved you well the fact that you want to divorce me like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be the nice one. I'm just like saying, I don't want a divorce. Like, you know what I'm? I, maybe I'm not explaining it right. No, but everything don't have saying. to be tumultuous up to the divorce. And I don't think every divorce does come across that way. I think there are some situations, because of hurt feelings, people are people say things, things come up. And again, the 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 ugly part about it is a lot of it we shouldn't even know, but because court records are public, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, public not public records and all that kind of stuff, we get we're privy to the information. Um, you know, it's just and again, we we judge situations off of the little snippets that we get. We see all the good stuff and then we see, "Oh, the good stuff is over, but we don't really know what happened in the middle. Now, like with Gary Owen and his wife, we know that he 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 admittedly was um, unfaithful to her very frequently, mm -hmm. and it may have just like yeah, they seem so loving and into each other. You know, they had the podcast going and all that reality show behind closed doors. She might have been like, "Damn, another one! Damn, another one!" You told me last time that that was the last one until it just hit. And how many times has she been hurt and hurt and hurt? So it's like, I'm not saying it's right, but you like the gloves come off. The gloves come off. You hurt me so much. Damn, who I'm not going to just walk into court. Yes, he can have everything. Yes, we're just going to do this amicably. No, I'm hurt. I'm mad. You've hurt me over and over again. Yeah, but that's I'm mad. Not the best and I'm not thing saying to be. I'm it's right. I'm to say it's not the best thing to be. I understand but it's what you're saying. But you are you acting out of emotion and you're being that way just because you're emotional. It's like if we if we want to be apart from each other, regardless if I file for divorce or not, you upset about that because you getting a a, a, um, a person is knocking on the door to give you some papers and Serving you upset. Yeah, like you upset about that. So you start to hire people to watch me and dig into my history and all this shit. Now you want to, you think I'm hiding money. Like all that kind of mean spirited shit comes out when in the end, all we both want is to be away from each other. So why don't we just make that happen as quick as possible with, okay, you deserve this. You deserve this by law. You deserve this alimony, child support, all that shit. And then we done. Well, we, that's another factor you got to add into. When you're talking about millions of dollars, that changes the dynamics too. Like people say money is the root of all evil. It's not. The lack of money 
It's the root, it's of, the all root of all evil. So the fear of, oh my God, am I not going to have any, that can bring out the worst in people, unfortunately. Right. So, right. you know, it's, it's, I mean, divorce in of itself is so, like, scary. I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine, like, us being in a situation where, like, like you said, where if God forbid anything happened and we decided, okay, we're not going to be together, I couldn't, I couldn't, it, it almost would be like, I'm going to be so quiet and mute about it in a sense of like, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm not going to put that kind of energy out there. I was really saying, I don't, I don't think I could, I love you so much and every, everybody out there knows how I feel about my wife. I love her. And if we got divorced, if it wasn't you cheating on me, I don't think that I could be arrogant or mean about it. Right. If it was you cheating on me, then I could see me being in that space, like you said, I'm hurt, mm -hmm. I'm lashing out, like, what the fuck, I didn't see this coming, Tosh, you're supposed to be my baby. But if it was anything other than that, like, just grown apart, like, I wouldn't be evil yeah. to you. Like, it's like, I, I, like you said, you don't, I'm sad like that I this is happening. Yeah, yeah like, I'm sad that you. this is happening. I don't. I don't want to hurt her. Like, I I'm, want I'm her to come back to me. Like, I don't, like, it's just crazy for a person to do that. Um, she's talking about the internet and what the, sh the shit that we see on the internet. Um, so this next thing ties into a two part. Um, Cat Williams did an interview with, 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 uh, with Shannon Sharp last week. Mm -hmm. As of a week, it's got 40 million views. Yeah. How much money do you think 40 million views it generates on YouTube? I looked this up and I got the numbers. How much 40 money? million views yes. on YouTube. I'm thinking, so I'm thinking you probably got to get like 100,000 views to make like anything, I would think, right? And that might 2, be- 2,000 is when you can monetize. Okay, so 2,000, would you get it like $100? So maybe 40 million. Are you kidding me? I, I Babe, I have no clue. So I'm completely I am guessing. shocked by this. At 40 million views, you get $10,000? 40 million views, you get between four and $10,000. For 1 million views, you get $137. Oh, wow. Most of the money you'll make with 40 million views will be your ad revenue. So if a person sees you have 40 million eyes, then they want to advertise on your, your thing. But if you don't so have any ads, how YouTube much you get paid from YouTube? They have their own ads. Oh, okay. So, you know, you know how it's a commercial on YouTube, okay. so those are their own ads. But ads that you 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 get yourself will be inserted in there. Okay. So that's different that's where you make most of your money. Wow. But yeah, that's isn't that crazy? It that is. doesn't seem like well, it makes legal. You... <laughs> it really doesn't. Well, but but you know what? It's so so here's the thing though. Because you can juke the system, like I don't know if the people know you what you gotta watch for 30 seconds for it to count. Ten. Ten seconds to count as a view. So you think to yourself, I mean, they're kind of like cutting their I mean, they're cut how how what do you think would be a fair number? There's a metric though that that gives you a um average of, of listening time. So oh, right, there's okay. a there's a metric for that. Right. So right. you can just go off that metric and not you know, okay, if the video is three minutes long and a person listened for a minute and 20, then you, you know what I mean? There's a method right. for that. But so what do you think should be, like, what, in your mind? What At least $100,000 for 40 million views. Okay. I have 40 million people who watch this video or this thing or this piece of content. 40 million. That shit can sway an election. And you mean to tell me you're going to give me four to $10,000? That's probably and that I, shit is an anomaly. Forty million views on one video in one in, in a week. This ain't TikTok right. we talking about, right? Like that's YouTube. That's a fucking anomaly. Most people do a hundred grand, two hundred grand. So I can imagine what that check is like. It's probably fifteen hundred thousand dollars. And that's why you know one of the things that um, I read. Is and don't get me wrong, it's it's money. It's a, it's a, a a second source of. of, of of income, it's right. a it's a means of income, but damn, like that's and that that's I read that's why people will clip because you can have a whole video, you take a snippet of that, post it, that might get a million, a yeah, snippet you of clip that, them, yeah. yeah, so that you you you're monetizing multiple times off of that one full package, yep. but, and then you do audio and video, and you know you can monetize that way yeah. too. But Jesus Christ, 
But um, isn't that crazy? That is that. That's a. Uh, I mean, I thought Tim. I just from based on your response, I thought okay, they must be lowballing people. So that's why I said ten thousand. But I didn't know ten thousand was like the max. Yeah, four to ten thousand dollars on forty million views. Right. So you're talking about? I'm just pulling out my calculator right now. Let's just say for uh uh forty million. Four thousand. So you talking about ten thousand? I don't know what I just did. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know what you did. So no, 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 you get one dollar. You're getting one dollar for every ten thousand views. That's what I was looking at. For every ten thousand views, you get yeah, one dollar. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's crazy. That just don't seem legal. Yeah, at all. Um, before we do the grams, quick question: um, Are you offended by me saying would you be my Coretta? <laughs> I, I'm not offended, but and take our relationship out of it, because you know, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm joking at you. But if a person said to you, maybe a new guy that you met or a boyfriend that you were, you're not married, and he said, you know, I really want you to be my Coretta one day, I is mean, that offensive? Like, motherfucker, I'll be your Tasha or I'll be your Mar whatever your name, I'll be your Tiffany, but I ain't gonna be your fucking Coretta. Or is it? I understand what you're saying. You know, I would actually, I. I it's not offensive to answer okay, that. Okay. But I would want to know exactly what does that mean to you because, you know, Doc, Reverend, Dr., Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> was known to, you know, Dip step out knowledge. a little bit. So are you asking me to be a Coretta to stand by your side no matter what? Or are you just asking me to be a strong woman on your side as you go out here and do good in the world? Like, exactly what does that what does that entail? So, like, I would want to know... I guess it means strong black woman stand by my side no matter what. You know I'm out here in the See, fight. See, that no matter what is the caveat. You know I'm because out here in the fight. It ain't no no matter what. I ain't standing by your side knowing that you dipping. I ain't standing by your side. I, I'm, I'm going to stand by your side as long as you are upholding the standards of our relationship. So, yeah, you want to call me your Coretta? It's corny. But rock out. You know, I wouldn't be offended by it at all. Okay. But wait, before we get to the Grimms, let's circle back. You skipped over Tory Hart going on tour with Cat Williams. What'd you think about that? That um, was going to be a part of the... Well, okay, we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I... To be honest with you, he's Kevin Hart, right? So come this... What's done in the dark will come to the light. Come to find out she she's a joke writer. And has been for a while. Mm -hmm. And is a comedian. And apparently has wrote a few jokes or punched up a few jokes for him on his earlier stuff. Mm -hmm. Kevin Hart, you know, they had a, a relationship and you know with her and they divorced or whatever. And I know when they first divorced, she used to say a, a bunch of, you know, bad it's stuff about him. Yeah. And he went on to be a mega fucking star. And I guess her way into her lane of comedy and writing and all that kind of stuff is, you know, I need a person to kind of like put me on. And if he's not going to be the one to do it, Cat Williams is known for putting people on. Now, the optics of it look crazy because it's your ex-wife and you going on tour with somebody he's openly beefing with. So that looks a little crazy. But again, he what's he going to do? Like, there's nothing he can do. Who, uh, okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I he feel, can't call her and say something. He got a fucking whole wife and family. Yeah. I mean, and, and from what I understand, they're on good terms now. I think her, she probably, she probably, I would think, I could be wrong. I would think she probably said something to him. And who and knows he before said, we even know if this is all aligned. This could just be coming out because that interview, it came out. She could have been booked to do this three months ago. Yeah. Who knows? It could have just be the heat of the interview. Now, let's put this out because it gives us some traction. Yeah. But again, I never knew what her profession was. And I didn't know that she was a writer and, and a, a, a comedian either. She does... Well, I knew she was a comedian. And, that, and that, so that was going to be my next point. So first, let me say, she probably ran this by him or said something to him. But he probably isn't... If that's the case, he probably isn't going to say that because you got to think. The people love drama. Why would she run it by him? And because you, they're on good terms. So she may have said something to him like, yo, Kat asking me, to, you know, you cool with this? But like, you not putting me on... You know I'm a comedian. You know I'm a writer. You don't let me write for you. You not. I don't open for you. You on a fucking mega stage. 
I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Be <laughs> on good terms. If we such on good, <coughs> why us why, working together? Why just, and why? How come I'm not a writer at your fucking company? You're not there every day. You got that that heart company. You're my ex wife, and I have a new wife, so there are some boundaries. I understand that, so you can't get mad or upset, or I don't have to run shit by I you didn't when say I she go. Had to. Oh, okay. I I'm just about to say when I go to, to make a move in my own life. No, I didn't say she had to. I just said like, she that's may an have. opportunity for me. Is cat fucking weird. It's, it's not like it's Bob Williams. It's but Cat you got to think too. They have children involved too. So I would think she just you know to keep everything on the up and up. You know, so the kids ain't involved in no drama. Like mm. I, the kids are teenagers, so they know they they hear the the conversation that Cat is having I'm sure about she the probably day. Told the kids because the kids you know that's their mom. I would think she probably ran this by not asking his permission, but ran it by him before it got out. He probably like rock out because the thing is this: she, I knew she was a comedian. She had already been doing shows. If you funny, you know people gonna like you. If you not, no matter who brings you out on stage, no matter who takes you on tour, if if you ain't good, you ain't good. Just because she's punched up some jokes doesn't mean that she has, you know. Th- it could have been. We don't know. It could have been some of his best material. I I just said just because oh. doesn't mean I don't know. I've never heard her do her own stuff. But what I'm saying is, if you're funny, you're funny, and it's going to work. do you know work. what punching up a joke is? Yeah, like, kind of, I think you should add this, or you should change this, or, or, or instead say of saying like this, this, yeah, this, or add this yeah. inflection in your voice, or pause right here when you say that, yeah. or make this face. Exactly. So, again, do, being able to do that in response to hearing what somebody has to say is different than you having your own original material and going out there. And then another thing is this, too. The After the interview, like you said, this could have already have been a line, but it being announced after the interview, people like drama. So it's look, it's giving that appearance. Kev is not, he going to play it cool. They, they asked him how he felt about it. He said, I hope the tour does well. He, he ain't going to say. Exactly. He's That's not going to be he, like, he, oh, Kevin she already Hart. asked me about it and I gave her my Did blessing. He look like he hating. He's going to allow the drama to be behind it because he's not going to hate on her. Go ahead, get your money. Do what you do. Even if he does hate it inside, he's not going to show it because he's Kevin Absolutely. Hart. Absolutely. And he's got the, the shield on and he has a, pers- a, per- a persona. Exactly. Let's not forget that. Like, he's Hollywood Kevin Hart. So even if he's pissed about it, he ain't going to say... I hope it fails. He I hope she feed sucks. Into the drama. Yeah, he's just gonna say, you know, I hope it does well. That's he's all you can to go, say. He's gonna take the Michelle Obama route. When they go low, we go high. He's always gonna take that route. Three grams. Um, I am going with. What am I going with? What am I going? Oh, the judge jumper, dude who jumped the bench at the judge. <sighs> yeah. He got put back in front of the same judge. And gave him his back probation, which was 19 months to 48 months. So he got four years back probation. Then they booked him with six felony charges. I was going to say, I for, wonder what's he, he going to get. He's going to have years. to see a different judge for that, they said. But they put him in front of the same judge just to continue with his what case. Finish, yeah, yeah. So he got four years max for his back probation. And then six felonies? He's facing like 15 more years. For four, because he didn't want to do that for which I mean don't get me I ain't snubbing my nose at four years four years in jail was four years in jail but it, I'm sure it wasn't worth what he's gonna get as a result of his actions yeah he might not come home for like the next 20 years Damn. because How's he it? didn't want to do four yeah. so for two minutes of your life beating the shit out of the judge for two minutes got you Damn near 20 that years. That temper. Hopefully he gets, him, uh, gets enrolled in some kind of anger management in there. God damn. That's, yeah, that's, that, that's a mess. That's, who that's, uh, and the fact that it went viral the way that it did, they are going to throw the book at him. They're, I think so Because, too. and they're going to want to set a precedent so other people know, like, you can't come at the judges like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're, they're going to want to set a precedent. Um, go ahead. What you got? Because I can't see. Um, they taking dog meat off the menu in South Korea. Can you imagine eating a dog? Um, if it was like farm raised, 
fuck you mean farm raised? Like, like collies on fucking farms and shit. If like, it was farm raised, fed good food, like a street dog out here or somebody's pet, you know, we feed it anything. So a farm dog or somebody's pet? All I'm saying is I think about like curry goat or something. What the fuck are you saying they, right now? <laughs> <laughs> fucking farm raised. If they made like curry dog or something, I'm thinking it would probably taste like curry no, goat. No, man, you can't I eat wouldn't no fucking want dog. it. I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't order it, but I'm thinking it'll probably taste like curry goat. I don't think so. I don't think a dog? Like that's man's best friend. You uh, could eat buck. No. <laughs> no, I'm not saying I would. If you had to eat a dog, what kind of dog would you want to eat? Um a lab? A little chihuahua? No, I I would probably want to eat like a um a Yorkie. No, they all small. They probably don't even have no meat on them. Great Dane? No, a St. Bernard would probably be a good one. You like dip them in some hot water to take all the... Oh, God, people's going to come for us. <laughs> I wouldn't bad. eat a dog. I wouldn't eat we a dog. Yeah, I wouldn't eat a dog. Graham 3, um, the great Angela Bassett has won a honorary Oscar. It wasn't the Oscars. It was like a other TV show where they was giving out Oscars. But she finally got an Oscar. And... Um, Regina King hey. gave a great speech. Great to see her out and about again after, after her, her son's, son's passing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, she gave a great speech. It was good to see her face. But Angela Bassett finally has an Oscar. Thoughts? You know, this whole honorary thing, I mean, it's great. I'm glad you said it because I don't like it. Yeah, it's great that she was recognized for her work. But she, like, why didn't she get an Oscar for what White love Oscars. got to do with it? Yeah, like yeah, like when the why? White people get an why wasn't she, get an she truly? It's almost like when people get like an honorary doctorate, right? Like you didn't go to school to earn it. Maybe they feel like through your life's work, but it's kind of like thanks. It's like, like they put a group of people together, mostly black. They gave them one Oscar and said y'all can give it away for honorary, and they gave it to her. And it's like you could she couldn't get an Oscar for the work she done at the white people Oscars. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy that she's being recognized for the great work that she's done. But I feel like, you know, to to be rec and it's a, I don't want to minimize or say we need the validity of the white people to like stamp us. No, because but if we're going in, by the system, be, right? Because in our world, she's already stamped. But in that world that she's part of, you know, pay where they're her, talking about equal pay and all that I was kind of stuff. Say, those pay things like matter. She like yeah, pay her for the work that matter. she's done. Give her the recognition that she deserves for the actual bodies of work that she's done. And it makes me feel like, do they not feel like any of her works have been Oscar worthy because she hasn't won? So this is kind of like, you didn't get an Oscar for this movie. You didn't get an Oscar for this movie. You didn't. But we're just going to say, huh, you've done it. It's, it's just like a, a pat on the back. Like like when they say, you know, this this generation of kids who gets, you know, a trophy for second place. It's like... We'll give you a we'll give you a participation award. You participated in all these movies. We didn't feel that you deserved the Oscar for any of them, but we'll give you an Oscar just because you participated in our system for so and long. And she is the great, great, beautiful, sixty beautiful. something years old Angela Bassett. And what's love got to do with it? Like her movies are the shit, but let's not act like she is not like over dramatic. But I was gonna say, can I? I she over nine one one. Sometimes, yeah, the TV series. Like, she acting, like, in the TV series, like, she in a dramatic play. Like, so sometimes she can, like, overact. But you know what? I love to see her. I mean, this is really And it's cool. her enthusiasm. It's her, um, because her, she's her gait, her elegance. Trained. Yeah, her, her gait, her elegance about it that makes it, like, oh, man, she's really acting. But... To sometimes turn it down a little bit, like but turn I it love off to a little see, bit. I love when she has like the smaller roles that she pops up in, like this. Like telling really somebody old. to get the milk out of the refrigerator, you don't have to be like get the milk out of the refrigerator. Listen, this is really old, but one of the movies that I loved her in, where her part was very minimal, was Heat. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and, and she she really said very few words, but I love to see just that pop of her. It's like, ooh, she added a little something yeah, to it, yeah, you yeah. know. But she, she can... Yeah, but shout out to her for her, yeah. you know, her honorary, you know. And she she's another person, too, where, you know, where, where you think we see her, but we don't really get... I love the way she preserves 
um the privacy of her life like you know we don't really see her she well, does she we, got, we know she got a husband yeah and she has the Courtney two she Max. has the twins and her children you really don't and see she, them much that yeah much. she posts them or whatever but you know it's real low-key and i love that it seems like they live a normal life yeah she's the shit she's dope um yeah she's dope uh Let's do a wrap. Back to the podcast, episode 157, coming to a close. This is your boy, International Walk. Keep your girl Tosh, the co-host with the mostest. Facebook, Act to the Podcast, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Podcast Index, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Player FM, iHeart fucking Radio, Apple Podcasts. Wherever you get your podcast, you can find us. All you got to do is type in Act to the Podcast, and we're there. Make sure it's Act to colon the podcast. If you fuck with us, you fuck with us. If you don't, you should. Peace.